Hello and welcome again. Round two in our attempt to record the history of Freeport. As you know, all this month of November and December, I'm talking about my beloved campaign setting that is Green Ronin's Freeport. Uh, and my personal history with the Freeport campaign that I ran for eight years at Seth's Games and Anime here in Ventura, California. Why I love this genre uh, and why we, I just generally, I think we all sort of love free pirates and pirate D&D themed things. So this is my personal history with how my campaign started combined with the actual history of the campaign world plus whatever changes I made. Um, as per Green Ronin, we are looking at the Pirate's Guide to Freeport uh, from uh, um, Green Ronin, which I have both the physical and the PDF copy of. It's still available on the Green Ronin site link. Now, I did this yesterday. I talked about it for like 30 minutes. I posted it, and for some reason, no sound. So you may or may not be hearing the sound of my voice. Uh, me and uh, uh, Steam Yard, maybe just not... I, you know, it could be Steamyard, it could be me, it could be my computer. Okay, so to understand the beginnings of Freeport, you got to sort of understand the sources. Obviously, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, both the ride and the movies are a huge impact on the Freeport campaign setting, as well as the actual history of the golden age of piracy, rot beginnings, middles, ends, the um, East Indian Trading Company, the expansion of the British and Spanish naval empire, and the fall and legitimacy of piracy and free patriot traders and freebooters and stuff like that. Uh, here in Southern California, we have our own small little slice of Freeport and that type of idea with the island of Catalina, where you know there's an island that once started as just a gambling getaway place uh, where rum runners would hide their rum slash natural wildlife preserve slash long history of natives, um, indigenous people to Southern California and pirates and stuff like that. And then now it's a tourist trap slash small place to live. Support me, water! Now, the actual city that Freeport is based on is a city called Freeport in the Bahamas, which actually has its own history of piracy. Now, they've taken that, they've taken Norse mythology, they've taken um, Mesopotamian and ancient um, Incan and Aztec mythology, they've taken a huge chunk of Lovecraftian, uh, as well as just general real-world pirates, they have, uh, as plus Stargate, and just, there's a couple other things. So, the world starts um, with the world serpent, the idea of a world serpent, you know, which is a Norse mythology. The entire world is built on this world serpent, the entire dimension of Freeport and the world of Freeport is built on the back slash dreams of the serpent. So the, the, the world serpent exists. There are other entities in this multiverse. Some are benign, some are evil and then there of course they're just the true chaotic lovecraftian nightmare entities so we have this serpent that creates a world demiplane whatever you want to call it and it realizes it's alone so it creates beings in its own image so we have the serpent people what you on t we would call them a dnd &D, or snake people or lizard man or draconians or whatever the serpent folk and these serpent folk build up an empire in the name of this serpent god that rivals probably Atlantis would be the closest real world, just sort of, you know, super sorcery, super technology, stuff like that. But still, the serpent realizes it's still kind of lonely. There's got to be other things out there. It knows there are other entities. It knows there is more to the universe. So it sends out its serpents to the other corners of the multiverse to bring things back, a common plot from other fantasy campaigns both glorian and the forgotten realms have this idea of the stargates and going out and bringing things back so that's how we get elves and dwarves and humans and gnomes and halflings and and uh orcs and all these all the other races either evolve naturally or are dreamed in or more likely than not they are they go out and they are brought back by these serpents so these serpents have extended into the multiverse they have spread out and they've brought things back to expand the plane, the world that is the serpent. So we have the world. Now, I always said that the Freeport world was flat 
on the back slash dreams of this giant serpent. If you sailed long enough in one direction, you would eventually either A, just fall off the earth world, or B, get lost in the fog and find that you've actually, you know, sailed completely and start back to where you started from. Because um, so we have this world, it's made up of islands surrounded by an ocean. All these islands have been reached out and brought back uh, chunks of other realities. Now, of course, when you go out into the multiverse and bring things back, other things, maybe not intentionally, come with you. So that's how the rot begins. The the eldritch, chaotic, Lovecraftian insanity, you know, beyond logic starts seeping in, as well as, you know, we have other dimensional entities that are now coming through these portals. We have what we would call gods and demons and angels and elementals all coming into and adding to the world of Yig, um, the world of the world serpent. So the serpent goes to sleep. It's happy. It has created this world and now can just dream and watch this world. So obviously, when as these things happen, all these other races eventually get their act together and decide to rise up against the Empire of the Serpents. Meanwhile, the Empire of the Serpents has begun its inevitable downfall of Rome. It's gone into corruption, chaos, you know, mutations, experimenting on themselves, the influence of these elder gods, inbreeding, uh, spreading out too far and losing contact with the original empire colonies are establishing their own little empires we have these interdimensional travelers some come back some don't you know the, the serpent people go so far away from their initial kingdom on this world that they lose touch and they decide to either go one direction and become benevolent or another direction so eventually the empire of the serpents much like atlantis much like rome falls leaving us with you know everybody else to pick up the pieces the first great age of adventure and into this great age of adventure, because we have mostly a waterborne world, which is the islands of various sizes. We have a couple large islands and then, you know, a couple dozen smaller islands. And then as you get farther and farther away from sort of this central chunk, there's less islands. Maybe there's a, a quad. I mean, when does an island stop being an island and become a continent, right? I mean, there's, there's larger islands and you get farther away. But mostly the 90% of what's going on in the world takes place where there's this large island and a bunch of smaller islands and then a bunch of smaller islands and archipelago. One of these islands is where Freeport is located. I always said that island was the center of the map since the world was flat and where Freeport was located was the center of that island. So Freeport really was the center of the world. So when you've got a mostly seafaring based economy, seafaring based world, there's very little interconnection uh, you know, these guys have their own little thing on this island. These So that would leads to boats and trade and, and contact. And what happens when there's boats and trades and people cro sailing across the waters? Pirates. The, the beginning of the golden age of piracy, the beginning of the first age of great adventure is a result of the fall of the Empire of the Serpents and the rest of the world trying to pick up the pieces and stretch out and go, hey, what's that over there? And there's these guys on boats going, you know, I could do work. Or I could just rob those guys who have already done the work. So we have the beginning of the Great Age of Piracy. Pirates versus these guys. Pirates versus these guys. These guys and these guys getting their act together and go, if we team up, we could probably fight the pirates. This pirate and this pirate teaming up going, you know, if we team up, we could probably be more powerful. Eventually, you know, the rest of the world is going, hey, we need to maybe get our act together and deal with these pirates because we can't trade. We can't explore. We can't expand if every time we send out a colony or a boat or a caravan, it gets attacked. So in response to this, all the pirates go, you know, we've got to stop fighting. We've got to work together. Let's make a place that is a free, a free zone, a trade city, where we all agree that we're not going to fight with each other. We're not going to work against each other. We're all going to have just this place where we can go. We can relax. We can get drier. We can drink Tortuga. If you're familiar with the Pirates of the Caribbean, movies tortuga which is actually based upon a real place which actually was based upon a real historical moment in the history of piracy here in the world where the pirates started to create these places where they could go and be on land for short periods of time develop lives develop families develop stores develop trade get drunk interact with each other and you know slowly these grew so the so this is how freeport originally starts 
And eventually it's Freeport versus the rest of the world. All these pirates who are using Freeport as their base of operations and the rest of the world is spreading out. Empires are starting to form and, you know, we're getting the beginnings of navies. We're getting the beginnings of what you would call the East India Trading Company. You know, uh, these other ones who want to legitimate trade and legitimate the pirate sea. So um, obviously, as in real worlds, the great age of pir the golden age of piracy begins to come to an end. The first great age of adventuring begins begins to become to an end. All the pirates are getting, you know, out out outflanked, uh, overpowered. Just they're not working, so they need to rethink the way they're doing things. So they just they they discover a government and they form a government and and they decide to become legitimate or as legitimate as pirates can be. They decide that there are ways we can make this island, make this city, make this idea work to their favor. So we have the first beginnings of what would be eventually known as the free lords or the sea lords. This government on Freeport, but a government run by pirates and adventurers and generally beings who are not so scrupulous is obviously doomed to fail. So there's a lot of infighting. There's like thieves guilds versus pirates. And of course there's cults spreading up. Meanwhile, the remnants of the serpent folk are starting to recover and starting to spread their corruption. We have this Lovecraftian corruption that's spreading over the world we have other kingdoms that are building up and you know empires are building up and they're starting to expand we're starting to get into what we would call like the second great age, age of adventure or like your your typical low level DD campaign go out explore go out hey we found these ruins hey there's these people in the ocean they're attacking our boats deal with them so obviously freeport can't support itself there's infighting this half wants to do this. This half wants to do this. One chunk of the Freeport goes off and decides we're going to start our own colony and do di things differently. You know, goblins and orcs start showing up on the island, evil cultists. So there's a war on, on Freeport. And the only way they can prevent this from getting worse is to go legitimate, to go back to the original idea. Okay, we're going to have this council. This council is going to run the day to day business of the city and of our piracy slash legitimate trade slash colonies. And at the head of this council is a very charismatic individual, the first king of Freeport that we never refers to instead of as king. And his name is Drac. And Drac manipulates things so that there's this council, but at the end of the day, he is the final arbitrator. He may or may not get himself involved in things, but if push comes to shove, Drac is the head of the council and he is the final voice. He is that 12th, you know, uh, vote or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and he sort of, you know, set, manipulates things. So the Freeport head sea lord will always be a descendant of his. But then there's some question of lineage. Because now as time passes and he dies and leaves this legitimacy and leaves the free the, the sea lords and stuff like that, we've got these guys who have broken off and started their own colony. And they're like, no, no, this guy's the, la the last heir of Drac. We've got this illegitimate person who's saying, no, my daughter is the heir of Drac. And we've got another guy who's like, I'm Drac's cousin. So that starts a war in Freeport. And of course, the other people who are working against Freeport, both these 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 uh, external forces like these other empires and these trade federations and these, you know, whenever you have this type of environment, you starting to have a lot of wealth come in and you have to have individuals who are, you know, built to profit off at Elf. So you have the beginning of a upper class level of citizency who have no real connection to the age of piracy if you follow you know real life the history of london and the history of you know ranchers versus farmers industry versus trade you get this you know uh, generation of idle rich of false nobles of people who just have money and make up titles oh i'm lord standish of fiddling water and there, this is starting to feel its presence in Freeport. So this war breaks out. And during this war, a couple things happen that sort of start leading to where my campaign begins. So this is important. So hopefully this is recording. 
All right, thing number one that's discovered. During the war, it is discovered that Freeport has a mirror universe called Fearport. And much like the Star Trek mirror universe, directly underneath Freeport in this alternate mirror dimension is Fearport. And Fearport can only be reached but through one way. And Fearport is ruled by the Full Fathom Five, which are basically a evil Super Sentai team. So we've got that discovery. Now, we've also got the fact that the Serpent Folk cult is growing and the, the influence of the corruption of this Lovecraftian horrors, this yellow sign is starting to seep into Freeport as you go out and trade and bring things back. Plus, you've got this evil mirror universe slowly seeping into Freeport. Now, what do idle rich people do? They, as real history has shown us, they get into spiritualism. They form secret societies. They form clubs. Oh, hold on. The phone's ringing. Hello? All right. Thank you very much. All right. I'm going to have to stop this here because it's my dentist. I, we will continue this in a moment. Thanks for being part of this. I'll talk to you later.